Welcome back to Defense News Weekly. In 2007, a cyber attack wreaked havoc on Estonia. Several other Baltic nation services and businesses were hit, and the attack was ultimately attributed to Russian hackers. The country has since become a leader in cybersecurity and digital living. In fact, its citizens can vote online. The country has also helped other nations strengthen their own cyber capabilities, namely Ukraine, which was hit in 2015 by a massive Russian cyber operation that took out power to much of the country. Leading Estonia during that time frame was Thomas Hendrik Ilves. I recently spoke to Mr. Ilves about Russia's digital threat for this week's actionable intelligence. Mr. President, welcome. Can you tell me a little bit about the Russian threat right now in terms of cyber for the neighbors in, in, in Eastern Europe? It's been, it's been rather high for uh, quite a while. Uh, in many ways, the story is not the Russian threat today, but rather uh, the, um, the absence of full-blown cyber warfare against Ukraine seems like they, their capabilities have progressed throughout the years, or is it that they haven't used them yet and they're focused more on a land war right now? No, I think, I mean, what we learned from the Russians over the years, especially after uh, 2008 in Georgia, when they combined cyber attacks with uh, kinetic attacks, that they're actually quite good. Um, I suspect that the uh, that this lower than expected uh, uh, intensity of cyber attacks perhaps has more to do with kind of a, I don't know what you can call it, a, a mutually assured destruction paradigm that they realize that the Ukrainians are not bad at all and, uh, and give as good as they get. And in that kind of situation, maybe you want to temper what you do lest um, you trigger something in response. And of course, the other side of this, or the another additional element to this, is that, uh, at least from what I've read, I don't, uh, that the um, all kinds of other activists and cyber people from outside Ukraine who are not necessarily Ukrainian have also been doing things. So it seems that they're facing a lot at this point, because of course, uh, the sympathies of those people who are capable of doing something, which are mainly people in the West, uh, are not with Russia. Uh, so um, so any, in any case, the, the, the bottom line is that we're seeing less than uh, people anticipated, which is kind of sad for me, because I just wrote a long article saying the future of war will be cyber. Is NATO prepped? Is it prepared to, to really have a counterattack if there is a major cyber attack from Russia? It's one of the biggest weaknesses of NATO is that uh, the, the cyber capabilities are much more national and nationally based than other than kinetic warfare. Now, the reason for that is that cyber grew out of the sort of intelligence, I mean, paradigm, where you are much less apt to share things, which is, I think, a fundamental problem that we need to resolve within the alliance. When you go into the digital or cyber realm, I mean, there's no mass. There's no distance on Earth, at least, I mean, because it travels at the speed of light, and there is no time difference. So I'd like to say that Tallinn, Torino, Toronto, Topeka, and Tokyo, they're all equidistant in the cyber realm. And this leads us to another sort of, I mean, should make us rethink the concept of alliances in cyber and the digital era. And we're moving very, very slowly in this direction. But rather we should, instead of just look, thinking geographically, we don't, we don't need to, and in many cases, we don't really shouldn't think geographically when it comes to cyber, but rather really create a genuine cyber alliance based on adherence to democratic values, freedom of speech, which allows you to actually have a much broader alliance. I mean, certainly, you know, Japan is just as much a liberal democracy as any country in NATO. 
maybe more so in certain cases. Um, and I, I would say that, and, you know, and it doesn't just have to be those big ones. I mean, Uruguay in Latin America is a, is a fine democracy with high digital, uh, I mean, development. There's no reason why Uruguay couldn't be in, and they're, they're probably more vulnerable as well, that we really need to think the whole concept of, of alliances uh, in this current era. Uh, 